Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Um, to our fans and everybody tuning in online and on TV, uh, it's my pleasure to introduce two great gentlemen that are going to help bring us back to where we belong. Um, we started this process shortly after the season was over. We wanted to make sure that we took our time, that we were thorough, to find the best combination of people for a head coach and a general manager that can work together and bring this organization back to the pinnacle. There's a lot of work in front of us. You know, there's certainly not a lot of time to celebrate on, on just making a hire. It, it's now time to get to work, and um, I'm going to turn it over to, to these guys to introduce themselves, and then we'll turn it over to you guys for questions. Thanks, Jed. You know, um, I, I, uh, I first want to uh, thank everybody for coming on out today. Um, I must take a moment to show my appreciation to Jed, uh, Danielle, the entire York family uh, for, for really showing the confidence in Kyle and I uh, with this awesome responsibility of, uh, of, of, of the task of bringing the, the 49er organization back to where it belongs, uh, and that's, that's competing for championships. Um, I also want to thank uh, my family, starting with my wife, Linda, and my kids. Um, <clears throat> they were going to surprise me today uh, and fly up here. She was pulling the kids out of school. They got fogged in in San Diego. So unfortunately, they aren't here. But, um, you know, it was a big, um, a big change for them. And it was important that they bought in. And they're incredibly excited. And so I want to thank them. Um, I also want to thank... Uh, Everybody who I was working for at Fox, they were uh, incredibly classy with the way that they, um, they handled this whole situation. They saw the opportunity. They saw my excitement and um, got behind um, what I was doing. So um, um, I, I want to thank all those people. That being said, today's about the future of this team. And uh, Jed talked about it's time to get to work. The work's already started. And uh, we're having a lot of fun putting this thing together. Um, People who know me well will tell you that I'm not into a whole lot of promises, but I, I will make a few. And uh, I, I've, I've been pretty clear in saying that this week. Kyle and I are on the same page that uh, we're going to uh, put together and assemble a team. And how long that takes, um, you know, we don't know. But we're going to assemble a team that will make you proud. I can promise you this. We're going to have players that will compete, that will compete every day, uh, that will compete to be the best that they can be. They're going to be great teammates. Uh, we're going to have a team that plays fast. Uh, we're going to team, have, a, have a team that uh, plays physical. Uh, we believe in those things. And we're going to have guys with great character, football character. And we're going to have guys that are, are interested in making their community a better place. That's important to Kyle and I. And it's important to Jed. Um, you know, I, I, I could not ask for better partners in the uh, process and the challenge that lies ahead. And Jed and Kyle, uh, this thing moved pretty quick. We were just in a gathering back there. And uh, you know, I think it surprised everybody how quick it, it, it went. Um, but like I said to the folks back there, uh, when I decided I, I wanted to marry my wife, that went pretty quick too. And that's doing pretty well 23 years later. So um, I trust in that. I think you, when you know, you know. Uh, I understood what a great organization this was. I had the opportunity to play for Bill Walsh uh, at Stanford and uh, really just was enamored with the 49er organization, all it stood for. Mike Shanahan came uh, before that. It was Denny Green who was very involved in the, in the 49ers and, and knew the 49er way. Uh, Mike Shanahan uh, had spent time here. And we talked about the standards of performance, all those things. And that's what I very much believe in. Um, but, but Jed's passion, we just kept checking boxes on things that we were aligned with in terms of how you, how you do uh, build a championship football team. The same thing can be had, uh, said for Kyle. Um, you know, with Kyle, I, I think he's one of the brightest minds in the game. Um, he's proven that, I think, every step of, of his career. He had a big challenge because his dad was kind of a big deal in this league. Um, but Kyle, I think, uh, to me, He's a guy who soaked in all the knowledge and experience of being a, a coach's son, but then went out and did it on his own and be, has become his own man. Uh, this year, he engineered one of the most prolific offenses in the history of football. Uh, the Falcons led the league in almost every offensive category. Um, 
He was a named assistant coach of the year by three esteemed outlets. He's not only a smart football man, um, but he's a leader who sets the tone through his work ethic. Um, I like it because he's, I like uh, what Kyle represents because he's convicted. He knows what he wants and uh, he's gonna find a way to make that happen. Um, I think he's innovative. I think he's aggressive. Those are all things I believe in. Uh, what Kyle and I talked about from day one, that, that this needed to be a partnership. Um, that that, that um, we saw the fact, you know, through doing a lot of his broadcasts and getting to know him, that we saw football in a very similar light. We see life in a very similar light. And uh, we understand that this has to be, um, everyone's got to be rowing the boat together to, in the same fashion from the cafeteria uh, to the equipment room uh, to the locker room all the way up to the front office. I see all my guys in the front office up here who have been hard at work in that room. They've already made me proud. And um, that's what it's going to take to get this organization back. So uh, all these qualities when in speaking about Kyle is why I really believe he's the perfect head coach to lead this team on the field and why I look forward to working alongside him for a long time to get this place back to where we're competing for championships. And with that, no further ado, it's my pleasure to turn it over to the 20th head coach in the history of the San Francisco 49ers, Kyle Shanahan. Thanks, John. Um, definitely gonna be tough to follow all that, but um, <laughs> I, you know, I've got to start out by thanking Jed, you know, and, and the whole York family. Um, giving me this opportunity is, is it's a dream come true, and it's not just an opportunity to be a head coach, to be, but to be a head coach at a place like this, where um, you talk about Bill Walsh, you talk about George Seifert, Steve Mariucci, all, um, Jim Harbaugh, you can go down the line with the coaches and you go back to the history of the players. Um, before I get into that, also I definitely thank my wife sitting up here, Mandy. Um, all my kids who are back at home. Um, I also got to thank the Atlanta Falcons. You know, what they've done for me in the last two years, um, it's been great. And starting with Arthur Blank, Dan Quinn, Thomas Dimitrov, um, entire coaching staff there and all the players. So it was two special years and um, it helped me get to somewhere I've been trying to get to my entire life, and I can't thank them more for that. Um, talking about the 49ers, though, it's it's always been a special part of my heart. And, and I moved out here in sixth grade, where, and I moved away from here to move to Denver at the end of my freshman year in high school. And you know, I had three good years here, and um, I have a very high expectation of what I've always thought this franchise is, and that was the best franchise in sports. And I remember spending all my summers up in Rockland as a ball boy, had a little. Um, Roll out bed in my dad's room that I would spend back then. Training camp was about a month long, and our, our connecting roommate was um, Bob McKittrick, who I was a ball boy for the line the entire time there. I remember staying up every night playing ping pong with John Taylor, who took me two years to beat him. Um, <laughs> and then after I did, then he finally told me he's going to start using his right hand. And, <laughs> and I, then I realized I never I was able to beat him. But guys like Harris Barton, Tom Rathman, Steve Young, um, Jerry Rice, just all these guys have really uh, they've been a big part of my life, even though I was only with those guys for three years. It's just those are the guys I looked up to and the guys I wanted to be. Um, had a hard time being them as a player, even though I tried my hardest. Um, it was much easier as a coach to be involved with this stuff. And uh, to be back to this, what I've always known the Niners to be, um, I can't wait to have the opportunity. And we owe it to the fans and everyone out here that together we, we bring it back to what it was. And I'm very confident we're going to do that. And, um, wasn't ever just going to, you know, I want to be a head coach my whole life. And, but it wasn't something that I was just going to do to do. It's something I'd like to do forever. And the only way you can do that is if, if you have a good opportunity to win somewhere. And, you know, that starts to me with the, the owner and the commitment of the organization. And getting to know Jed through the interview process and hearing him talk and getting to know him as a person and what he's committed to doing, um, it gives me a ton of confidence in where we're going. And it's not easy to win in this league. It's not easy at all. But when you have everyone go in the same direction, uh, that's what gives you a chance. And for Jed to allow John and I to come together and bring us in at the same time and uh, to be here with John, it's, you know, nothing's guaranteed. But I always bet on people. And in um, regards to the situation, I know we got, I got two guys sitting next to me who our intentions, no matter what it is, is, is to do things the right way, to commit to the right people. Um, to work extremely hard and make the right football decisions. And I keep things pretty simple in my life. I try to. There's really two things that are important to me, and that's my family and it's football. And that's really all the things I think about. And um, as sad as that is, it's true. Um, 
and that's all you guys will get from me. And you know, you don't always make the right decisions, but but I can promise you guys, well, we're going to do everything we can to do that. And we're going to hold people accountable. We're going to do it the right way. Everybody who's in this, from the top to the bottom, is going to have uh, be going in one direction. And that's what does it take to win now, and what does it take to consistently win over the long haul. And we will be committed to that 100%. And I could sit up here and talk forever, but um, I'm sure you guys would have a lot more fun asking questions. So uh, we'll, we'll get that started. Okay, we're going to pass microphones. Uh, again, please introduce yourself and give your outlet as well so that they can start to know you. And front right, or second row right. Matt Mayoko, CSN Bay Area. Uh, Kyle, uh, you have one job one day. You have a, a new job the next day. How much time did you take after the Super Bowl to reflect on the Super Bowl? And how will that experience help you in this particular job? Um, you know, it was, it was actually pretty, it was a special thing to go through. And obviously, you guys know the result of that, which wasn't easy, uh, as hard as anything I've gone through. And what was really cool about that is, um, you know, most head coaches who've been in that situation, they're usually at their next spot the next day. And, um, you know, Jed told me to take my time. And he allowed me to take a day and a half before I came out here. Um, I was definitely grieving it, and I probably will for a while. But um, you know, to be able to go up to the building in Atlanta the next day, get to talk to all the players, um, all of us spend some time together, go through it again, uh, really gave gave us some closure on it. And you know, we put our whole our, our heart and souls into that season, into that game. Um, we did everything we could, and I know the results weren't what we wanted. Uh, you got to live with that. But um, I'm real proud of the coaching staff, myself, um, the players that. We did as good as we could. We had no hesitation, and we let it all out there. And you got to live with the results, but that's why we're in this business. You got to take the good with the bad. And I'm just very happy that I was a part of it. Front right here, Nick Wagner, ESPN. Jed, you talked to roughly I don't know 15 people throughout this process for for both jobs. When you got feedback on the team and the organization, what did you maybe learn about your team that you didn't know, and how did that inform your decision to hire these two? Um, I don't know that that's what informed my decision to hire these two, but. But certainly talking to people, and I think they saw where we're, we're not where we should be, you know, and we need to get better. And I think that's very clear. And I think in talking to Kyle, you know, he was, he was very direct with, with what he wants to do with the team and, and how he wants to build this thing and get it right. And he knows that he's going to have the leeway to do that. He's going to have the time to do that. And we need to make sure that we commit to building something that we're going to all be proud of when it's all said and done. Phil Barber, front left. Uh, Jed, Phil Barber, Santa Rosa Press Democrat. Uh, Six-year contracts for coaches and GMs are not that common in this league. Some might even see it as a risk from a business standpoint. What convinced you to make that commitment to both of these men? I, I believe in both of these guys. And, you know, I, I mean, similar to the last question, you know, we aren't where we want to be. We're a, we're a two-win team right now. And... We need to make sure that these guys have everything that they can to get this thing up and running. And I believe in these guys, and you know, I think they're going to be here a lot longer than that. Uh, second row right. Tim Calcomi, Mercury News. Kyle, there was a report that after the Super Bowl you were telling people that you blew it. Uh, is that accurate? And is that something you, I mean, to, to be cliche, that you learn from, you take to this job, and, and maybe there are there things that you say you're going to remember from that, certainly the fourth quarter, that you take into this job? Of course. I mean, I remember every single play, and I will go over those for the rest of my life. Um, that's kind of the life we live as coaches, and it's, it's magnified in the Super Bowl, but it's also that case in every game. And I was informed of that report actually a few hours before I came in here. Um, I don't know if I use those exact words, but that sounds about how I talk. Um, it's, you know, when, you know, when you're the coordinator of an offense or you're the head coach of a team, um, you're responsible for what happens out there. And um, if a play doesn't go right, if a player misses something, that, that's, that starts with the offensive coordinator when, when you're on offense. And I did believe we had a very good chance to win that game, especially at the end. And we didn't get it done. Um, in terms of the, when you use the words, I blew it, I don't look at it that way. I, I believe we missed an opportunity. And you know we didn't get it done. I'll go back through every play through that for, for the rest of my life. But um, you know I talked to our players about that the night before the game in terms of you know, people, it's human nature when you get in big moments like that to lock up, to hesitate, to try to take the easy way out, make sure you don't get blamed. Um, that's something that I wasn't going to do and people on our team weren't going to do. It's, um, we, we played that game how we played the entire year. And we thought, uh, I called plays that in that game the way I have the entire year. 
Um, doesn't mean I'm always right. Doesn't mean they're always going to work. But I promise you I prepare as hard as I possibly can. I always do what I believe is right um, with our coaching staff and the players. And then you live with the consequences. And yeah, it's going to be hard living with that loss. And every play that didn't work, I regret, as always. But um, I can deal with it because I can look at myself in the mirror and know I did what I thought was right at the time. And that was the most important thing to me. I didn't change because of a circumstance. Um, I did what I thought was right. And whatever happens, if you do what you did that was right and you believed in that because of the preparation you had, then you should be able to live with the consequences. Front row left. Yes, uh, Mark Purdy over here, Kyle. Mark Purdy, uh, Mercury News and the Bay Area News Group. It's no secret, Kyle, that uh, one of the big decisions this franchise faces in the upcoming season is, is that quarterback position. Understanding you probably can't or don't want to talk specific names. I'm interested in general, in general, who would you like to see starting at quarterback uh, for the 49ers this season? Uh, a, a, a rookie that you could mold. B, a, uh, someone who's played quarterback in the league this season uh, and, and might be available either by trade or free agency. Or C, a, uh, maybe a guy who's been a backup in this league that has not received a chance to start. Um, if you could just give us any indication of how you would rank those choices, yeah. Yeah, that would be helpful. Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty easy answer because it's the same for that position as any position. You, you want the best player possible, and there's not one absolute answer to that. Um, everyone wants the best quarterback in the league. Everyone wants the best left tackle in the league, the best receiver. It's, that's what you're always trying to find, and that's what you are always looking for as a personnel staff, and that's what you're always hoping to get as a coach. Um, you don't get those options every year. That's why you have to look into the draft at every single possibility. You have to look into free agency in every single possibility. You have to look at possible trades in every single possibility. And that's why there is no off season, because there's so many possibilities. And there's, there's no absolute way on how to find that in this league. But there's different options each year. We have to find out every single one of those options. And then you evaluate those. And whatever you think the best option is that gives you the best chance to win now and in the future, that's what my A is. B and C, and there is no exact answer. You, get, you have to see the options, and you rank those differently every year. It depends what your choices are. Third row right behind Tim. Uh, Vern Glenn, KPIX TV. As you evaluate the quarterback position, are you looking at a good decision maker, or are you looking at somebody that can essentially make all the throws? Um, you know, that's, and you guys are probably going to get annoyed with me this a lot because. You know, I, I really never speak in absolutes. You, you take the best possible scenario. Everybody wants, you know, I always joke around about it, but as a receiver, I, you know, I hope to find six Julio Joneses who couldn't do everything. That'd be nice. Yeah, and that's, that's not going to happen. You, you got to find what the best options are. So the people have won in this league being pure throwers and can make every throw in the pocket. People have won in this league making plays with their legs. Um, there's been tall quarterbacks who have made it. There's been short quarterbacks who have made it. There's lots of ways to do it. But you have to find out what characteristics make someone successful. And when you do feel that they have certain characteristics, when you're talking about the quarterback position, whether it's their intelligence, their mobility, just their throwing ability, um, then you got to think of, all right, how can I put a scheme together that allows them to use those traits? And does he have the players around them to allow them to use those traits? And that's how you start to package things together. You don't just get to build your your player like you want on Madden, how it goes. You, you got to see what's out there. And everyone has different things, and you rarely get the full package. And if you find a guy who has the full package, then you do whatever it takes to get that guy, and you don't think twice about it. But that's easier said than done. There's not many of those people on the planet. So you got to, there's lots of ways to be successful. Never can a quarterback do it by himself. So it's important that you have someone who can handle the pressure, um, who can do it week in and week out, and also has the ability to do what you're asking of them. But it also is going to take a very good cast around them. All right, front row center. Grant Cohn, uh, Santa Rosa Press Democrat. Kyle, other than your history with the 49ers from your childhood and the franchise's prestigious history from the 80s and 90s, what made this job attractive to you? Why did you want to come here? Uh, I believe that they're committed to winning. You know, it's, you know, when meeting with Jed and talking to him, you know, it was really the first time getting to meet him and having two different interviews with him, spending a lot of time with him. You know, everything that he said was as good as um, I could hope for. And just like Jed said, I, I didn't go into these interviews just trying to get a job. I went into these interviews being very honest. Um, I have been around this business a lot um, my whole life, and, but especially even coaching. And I've been in a lot of different organizations. And there's lots of things I believe that are important to consistently win. And to be able to um, talk to Jed realistically where I, we thought the team was at and where we thought it could go. 
and to not hold anything back and to see how he reacted and to understand his commitment. And then when a guy does is committed and gives you a six-year contract and shows that he's willing to give you some time. And but what, what I don't want to do is come here and make a bunch of decisions just trying to win to save ourselves right away. And I, I'm going to win the first day and to the last day. I want to do everything possible to do that. But I also want to make the right decision for the organization. John wants to make the right decision for the organization. And in order to do that, you want to you got to do it the right way. And we'll see what resources are available out there. We've got a lot of good draft picks. We've got a lot of money for agency to spend. Um, but you don't just go do that to do that. Um, you got to make sure that you make the right decisions. You build it the right way. Everyone's goal is to win right away. But the main goal is to build a team that you can win consistently. And that's what our goal is. And when you have an organization that shows you that, that um, you're confident in them as people, um, you can talk to them that way and trust them as humans. And they also back that up with the contract situation they gave us together. Um, I can't think of a better situation for ourselves. Second row center. Okay. Kyle Ann Killian with the San Francisco Chronicle. Um, it's February 9th, which is kind of late to uh, be um, putting together a staff. And I'm just wondering how far along you are in the process and when do you expect to have that completed? I love it, Z. <laughs> I, Very bad form. I'm, I'm gonna, we're going to work. That's the first thing that I'm, I'm trying to do is finish the staff up. Um, definitely as behind on that as you can be, and that's just the way it is. Um, you know, it's, you know, I wish I could have started earlier, but, you know, getting to play in the Super Bowl is a pretty cool thing also. So it's something that you got to deal with, but that's something I'm going to be doing here nonstop. Um, we're not there yet. Uh, we're getting closer, but um, nothing's finalized. But that's something that got to get done a lot sooner than later. Uh, second row, middle, Eric. Jed, Eric Branch with the San Francisco Chronicle. Uh, John had, had talked about one of the, at least down on the list of his reasons for wanting to keep his interviews secret, uh, was the fact that you know he'd heard about a, a culture of leaking information from the 49ers, and he wanted to see if you and Parag could keep that information private. Uh, he also said he had, he had a very good job. Uh, he wasn't you know desperate to, to go to go anywhere, and so that therefore he asked very direct questions. Uh, just went wondering, as far as those direct questions, did he address uh, leaks in that culture, and has it made you reevaluate anything? No, I mean, we talked about a lot of things openly and directly, but I don't think we, we delved deeply into that. Um, you know, he brought up some of the media reports of that being an issue, and obviously nobody knew that we interviewed John didn't come out, and I think that speaks to the culture that, that we have in this building. Um, I think it's very important to make sure that the things that we do together, we want to make sure that we are open and transparent, but there are a lot of things that are going to happen with the three of us that are not discussed with anybody else, and you know that's where the give and take has to be between us and the media and the fans of, ultimately, I think our fans want to have a Super Bowl parade down Market Street. And we're going to do everything that we can to get to that. And everything might not be perfect along that path. But if we work backwards from that, you know, we will, we will be open with the fans. We will be open with the media. But there are a lot of things that we're going to be doing together. And you know, we're, we're going to have to keep those in-house. Second row left, Kevin. Uh, Kevin Lynch with San Francisco Gate. And uh, welcome back to the Bay Area to, to both of you guys. And this is a question for, for both of you. Who is going to have final word on free agency, the draft, 90-man roster, 53-man roster? How does that break down? You will, um, you know, look at we, we committed Kevin to uh, nice last name by the way, I like that. Um, <laughs> we committed to truly making it a partnership, and I think uh, the roles as they're defined are reflective of that. Um, you know, I can tell you, Kyle has control of the 53. Um, I have the 90. Free agency and draft, I think I have. But in all of those, uh, it's also written that, you know, subject to approval of the other guy. And so um, that's the way we wanted it. That's the way um, we wanted it reflected. But that's the reality of it. That's the way uh, when we started having these discussions, I think why they went so well is because that's what both of our motivations were. I think we've both seen places where it works. And that's the situation you have. We've seen places that it doesn't work. and you've got friction and, and um, that's not what we were all about but you know Kyle yeah that's, I mean that's one of the reasons I didn't want to pass up this opportunity I mean you um you know when it comes down to the 53 and the 90 a lot of that's just something you have to put down on paper and it's stuff that helps you out if stuff goes really bad um, if stuff doesn't go really bad and you're working with the right people it usually it isn't something that comes up 
And to have an opportunity where an owner gives you a chance to come in with the GM um, and to make sure that we both meet together before they do it. And it's, um, that's what made this so special. You, know, you don't get that opportunity much in our business, and it's something that I never really thought um, I would get that opportunity in. Um, when seeing that you had an owner who understood how important that was and gave us that opportunity, that's something that I, I didn't think it was something I could pass up because that is special and that, like I said, it's very hard to win in this league, but um, you have a chance if you're all going the same direction. All right, uh, se uh, second row middle. Uh, Cam Inman, Bay Area News Group. Uh, John, with, with you being in charge of free agency and kind of leading the charge with that, um, if I was a free agent player right now, what would be your recruiting pitch to me on why I should come here? Um, you like winning um, because we're going to do that. Um, you like doing things the right way uh, because we're going to do that. Um, you know, I'm looking at former players out here. I see Keena Turner. I see Paris. Uh, I believe that's Eric Wright. Is that right? Uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, Guy McIntyre, Jesse Sapolo, Steve Bono. Um, anybody else in here, former player? Um, those guys created uh, the standard that we're striving for. I've reached out to a lot of these guys and let them know that not only are they welcome, um, we really want these guys around because that's what we're aspiring to be. I've also told them we can't ride on their coattails. We understand that we have to earn their trust as well. Uh, we understand that we have to put in the work. That's the only way you do it. Um, you go about your business every day and try to get a little bit better. And um, so that's, that's important to me. That's important to us. But that, yeah, that's what I would tell a free agent player. I'd also tell them you've got a head coach um, that's going to put you in the right position to be successful. I think that's one of Kyle's great skills. He takes players and he plays to their strengths. And uh, I think that's what great coaches do. Um, they play to the strengths from the way he worked with Robert Griffin in Washington to the way he adjusted to Matt Ryan and uh, really pulled every ounce. He lets players max out by putting them in optimal positions. And, and I think that's uh, the mark of a great head coach. I think when you look at also what excited me so much about John is, and John had a, a pretty good deal b before coming here. And you know, and I remember when he told me that, you know, why he wanted to be a general manager and just the, he really missed the, someone winning and losing at the end of a game. And he, he enjoyed doing the announcing and being a part of the NFL, but um, that the, the fight to go through something with a group of guys and what, what we go through together. And it is not easy. And it's, it's a grind for everybody. But it is worth it. And that, that's really what people who played, people who coach, um, those are the reasons when people get out of it, they miss it so much. And when you got a guy who had as, as good of a life set up you know, with his job and where he was, and he wants to come be a GM for one reason, because he wants to be a part of that working to win again. And that's how I think, too. It's, um, there's a lot of stuff that goes on in this business, and um, it's a big time business, and and I get that. But when it comes down to it, there's when when you have the people who are working together to try to lead an organization, and the way they think is pretty simple. It's it's about football, and really not much else. I, I think that's what players want to be a part of. Um, we're going to shoot guys straight, and we're going to make those hard decisions. And every decision we make won't be based off perception, and won't be based off. What gets people to like us the most? It's going to be based off of what's best for this organization and gives this place the best chance to win. And I hope people can respect that. And I, do, I believe players respect that. And we'll shoot people honest. And it'll be very simple to understand why we make our decisions. And it's we've got a one-track mind. And it's how to get this organization great again. Front row center. Mindy Bach from CSN Bay Area. I don't doubt the desire or drive or work ethic. One thing that is lacking for Mr. Lynch experience, mm -hmm. never been in this position before. So a question for both of you. How do you, with two months to go before free agency, the draft, kind of fill that void of experience? And, and how are you doing that? Because yeah. obviously those decisions in the draft room, very quick, a lot, you know, right. it's, you've never had to put together a roster before. So this, even though you know the game, new territory. Yeah, no, I, that's, that's a good question. And, and uh, I think the answer to that, and it's something that Jed, Kyle, and I s spoke about, I got to surround myself with a great team. Uh, I've already done that. Uh, Adam Peters has joined us as a vice vice president of player personnel. And uh, Adam's an incredibly skilled evaluator of talent. Um, give you a little scoop here. Um, we've also made another hire, um, a former teammate of mine and also a former general manager in this league, Martin Mayhew, has joined us as a senior personnel executive. Um, we've also have Tom Gamble in this in this in this room who um, 
you know, Jed said, hey, do you have a, a problem? I, I said, 29 years of experience, why wouldn't I embrace that? And so I'm going to embrace all those guys. Um, I can tell you that we've been in draft meetings for the last two days, and uh, it's been great. I think we have a great process going. Um, we've got a great, you know, that's one thing you, I'm not a guy who's going to come in and just change everything. You come in and see what you have, and I've been very encouraged with what we have already. Um, I told Jed the whole time, um, here's, here's what I know. I know. I know football. I'll put my football acumen up with, with anyone. Um, I, I can always improve, and I, and I know that. And I, um, I know people, and I know how to lead. And I think those are important to me. To me, I'll learn the rest. But you're right. There's things happening right now, and I thought that's why it was so critical to surround myself with people who have been there before. Malika Babano with uh, Post News Group. Uh, kind of a two-part question. In wanting to get the franchise back to its winning ways, um, what are some of the things that you want to do? Is offense your first priority or defense? And have you reached out to any of the current players on the roster? And with the lack of experience, um, what do you want them to know up front that they can trust this process? Speaking to me? Oh, both of you. Both of you. Go ahead, Kat. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, I've talked to a couple guys. I haven't got a chance to reach out to everyone yet. You know, I got here yesterday and it's I haven't been able to do anything to tell you the truth. Um, can't wait to get and study our own roster. That's the first thing. You know, after figuring out this coaching staff, I'm going to sit and watch a lot of tape and um, study our own roster. And you got to do that before you look at anything. With you know, because I have no opinion on free agency till I know what's here, and it starts with what's here. Um, but looking forward to meeting all these players. Uh, got a lot of respect for a lot of guys that I've played against over the years and. You know, I've been evaluating guys coming out of college, so it's not just about going against guys. I know the background of them coming out of college also, and um, we're going to do things right, and it's gonna, we're going to work hard at it, and we're going to do our best to get the best players in here possible and make sure to take care of the players who are here doing things right. It's, um, you know, I always feel that when you have a good player, um, as long as he's a great person and has great character, and then you can never go wrong, and those are the guys you got to take care of. Um, there's a lot of good players, but it's hard to find a, a good player and a great person. And when you got both of those together, um, that's what gives you a chance to win. Because um, there's, there's rough times in this league. There's rough times in every year. Um, as soon as you lose two games in a row in this league, it just it becomes Arm Armageddon everywhere. And, it's, and that's part of the business. And you, you hear it any time you get out of the building. You hear it from your wives. You hear it, they hear it from everyone else. And you need strong people. It's not just about talent. You need strong people with high character that um, sometimes you can't find out really who people are until you go through adversity. And I'm looking through doing that with guys and finding out who are the guys who can handle it, uh, who wants to fight their way out of it. And you try to get the, try to find the guys who, when things get tough, the ones who point fingers, those are the ones that it's tough to win with. And you got to find that out, and that does take time. But I'm planning on going through lots of good times and bad times with these guys. And when you do that, um, that's how you form a bond. And you, you, it's a shared sacrifice that you go through with each other. And like I probably have said a bunch of times, it's not easy, but it's worth it. And we're going to be ready to go through that grind. Yeah, you know, and I, I would just say, um, you know, some of the players are here and I've visited with them all. Um, you know, I think the important thing for Kyle and I to do first and foremost is to be very clear with the vision we have for this place, what it's going to take to be successful. And then I think once you set a vision, you got to also let them know um, that we're not going to we're not going to have a lot of rules, but the rules we have, we're going we're gonna to adhere to. And so that because uh, that's not just to, to do that. That's because of, I've been there before. Kyle's been there before. And discipline's a big part of this thing. And um, accountability's a big part of this thing. Uh, I remember Tony Dungy, you know, taking over in Tampa. And prior to that, it was constant change. And Tony came in and said, and I think this, you know, people talk about six-year contracts. What that represents to players is um, stability. And I think you need stability, but those players also need to know that we're going to be relentless uh, in our pursuit of players who fit what we're looking for. And so it's an, uh, important to articulate uh, what it is we're looking for. We've tried to do that. We'll continue to do that. And then finding guys that fit that, and we won't stop until we do. Second row, left center. Uh, Jacob Palmer, San Francisco Examiner. Jed, um, some of the criticism around the first of the year was that it was going to be hard for you to land your preferred candidates for these openings. Do you feel vindicated today sitting with Kyle and John here? Well, I mean, I think these are hands down the two best guys. I I'm not worried about feeling vindicated from criticism. I mean, you know, part of my position is is to take criticism, and I fully accept that. And I'm the person that asked for it. When I sat down with Murphy Mack a while ago, he said, "Hold me accountable," and I want you to hold me accountable. And 
we haven't lived up to our standard. And I think when you look at Kyle, when you look at John, and you look at the teams that they're starting to build, you know, we're starting to put together something that I think has a chance to be special. Um, but, you know, again, it's not about vindication. It's about what work can we put in to get to where we want to go. And it's, it's getting to Market Street. It's taking a ride with, with the mayor of San Francisco and, and hoist the Lombardi Trophy. That, that's what we're here to do. Second row right. Tim Kyle, come again. Kyle, how, how much personnel experience have you, you know, you can see the couple of Cleveland players who ended up with Atlanta this year. Uh, how much hands-on experience have you had with this? Uh, and given the clout you had as, a, as we all said, the, the, the hottest coordinator candidate, why didn't you demand full control? Not, nothing against John here, but demand full control of the 90 of, the, of, of, <laughs> of everything, like, like Dan Quinn has had, like I assume your dad had in Washington. Why not demand all of it? Uh, well, why? Well, I, I don't want to demand all of it. You know, I, I think, well, what, what's important to you? I, I've always thought, you know, none of it is, it's all, none of it matters if you're working with the right guy. So it's what you want to put down on paper. And I don't need all that down on paper. I, I like to, it was important to me to have the 53 on paper because I think that it's important that the players know that and that the coaching staff is ultimately um, going to be responsible for that. But that, that's more of a perception thing. When I got paired up with John and talking to Jed, it's why, why demand all that stuff when I don't think it matters? It's some, not something to fight for. It wasn't something that John needed to fight for. I wanted both to have shared responsibility. I think John felt the same. And we're not coming in here. I'm not, if things go bad, I want to make sure I have all this stuff. And it, things aren't going to go bad. We're, we're, we're coming here together, and it's going to work together, or we're going to lose together. And um, that's what makes it special, because um, you know where, what are both our intentions are. There's no hidden agendas with any of us. It's, we're going to keep this as simple as it can be. And um, I think having an, um, that would be me speaking out of two sides of my mouth if I was trying to demand everything and taking advantage of a certain situation. Front row left. Hi, Tracy Sandler from Fangirl Sports Network. <clears throat> this team is coming off two pretty tough seasons. Um, with not great records. So I know it's going to take some time, but at the end of next season, what would you consider a successful season, not just in terms of record, but in changes on the team and in the organization? Well, I, I personally, you know, something that's been important to me over the years, you know, I've, is, you know, truly answering that question would be trying to answer to you a result. And uh, results not something that you control. You know, we're, we're going to worry about this process. And the process is we're going to work as hard as we can to get the right people in here and do it the right way. And if that's your process and you do that day in and day out and every single day, you know, we, we have to set a certain standard here. And a standard is going to start with um, the coaching staff, the personnel department, what our expectations are. And my expectations are is that everyone works their hardest and gives their best every single day. But it doesn't truly become a standard until that's the player standard. And once we can get the players to own that to where we don't have to always make sure that we're telling people to do it, they're actually held, holding each other accountable, that's when you have something special. And that doesn't happen overnight. Um, you definitely have to give them direction. But it's just coach talk until they own it. And when they do own it, um, that's when good things happen. So at the end of this year, um, I hope at the end of the OTAs, I hope at the end of training camp, however long it takes, we'll keep working to do it. Um, but I hope our, we can develop a culture here where our players have an extremely high standard and extremely high expectation that matches exactly what the three of us are talking about up here. John Lund from KMBR. Uh, Kyle, can, can you kind of explain that the, the history of the league is littered with guys who are great OCs, who are great DCs, but they didn't work as a head coach. How, how do you kind of make that transition? And then there was a report yesterday that said you weren't going to hire an offensive coordinator. Can you kind of explain then how the offense will work and, and what went into that decision as well? Uh, yes, we're going to put it together, great coaching staff. Um, you know, I, I plan on calling the plays, which is usually an offensive coordinator um, his duty. So. You know, I don't think it's that important to name an offensive coordinator. We're going to get a bunch of good coaches in here that I think a bunch of guys will eventually be capable of doing that. Um, but I didn't think it was the most important thing right now, especially with myself planning on calling it. Um, I don't know if it would always be like that, but especially in this first year, I think it's important to set that tone. Um, you look at the history of people who have been successful coordinators, not head coaches. I mean, you have to look at every situation um, individually, and it's – you know, what situation were they in? Um, how much time were they given? Um, did they have the ability to succeed? Um, maybe they weren't as good of a head coach as a coordinator. And um, we'll see how I am. I'm very confident that I I'll be able to do a good job as a head coach. Um, 
you know, I can't do everything the exact way I've done as a coordinator, but uh, when I was a coordinator, I couldn't do everything the exact same way I did when I was a quarterback coach or a receiver coach or a quality control or a GA. You have to adjust, you have to grow. Uh, you never stay the same. You're always getting better or worse. And I've been waiting for this moment my whole life. And um, I know I'm ready for it. I believe I've been ready for it for a while. And you know, I'm not gonna be a finished product by any means. You, you better work every single day to get better. And I promise you guys I will. And I hope I um, can start off being great right away, but I know it's, it's going to take work and I'm not going to do everything right, but I promise you guys I'll learn from my mistakes and um, you're going to get someone committed to their job and it's, it'll, it'll work out. Uh, last question. We're going to go here front left. This is for both Kyle and, and John. Chris Biederman, uh, Niners Wire, USA Today, Sports Media Group. Has there been any communication with Colin Kaepernick and uh, how are you guys approaching the, the process with him given his contract status going forward? Yeah, um, you know, I, I, Colin reached out, and uh, you know, we plan on visiting. Uh, you know, that's uh, that's something Kyle and I c committed to. Um, Kyle Kyle spoke to that. In order to find out what you need, you have to first really take inventory of what you have, and so we're still very much in the process of doing that. Um, we're just at the beginning of it. I think the first order of business is Kyle and I um, both really attacking it and seeing what we have here, and we'll do that with his situation. Uh, we'll sit down with him and. And uh, if if uh, if we see fit that he's a part of it, we'll commit to that. If not, you know, we'll figure things out. Yeah, it starts with me with just studying people. You know, I, you know, most of the offensive guys I haven't studied since they were college players. Um, the defensive guys I've studied to a degree because I've played against Niners a couple of times over the last few years. So, um, you know, with me, it's I I see a lot better than I hear, and I need to go watch it on tape. And Colin, just like any other player, is someone I'm going to be watching a lot of tape on over these next few weeks. And before I, we can look into anything, a free agency, draft, anything, you have to know what the players on your team are. And that doesn't happen from just turning on a game. That happens from watching a lot of stuff. Uh, it takes a lot of time. Um, it is a process. I am a little bit behind right now. Uh, but there's, I have the time to do it. And I'm looking forward to it and can't wait to get started on it.